Hi, I'm Mr Parker and this is question 9 on the OCR Core 2 paper from January 2012. In part 1 we need to sketch the graph of y equals tan half of x for minus 2 pi is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2 pi on the axes provided. On the same axes we then need to sketch the graph of y equals 3 cos a half x between the same values of x, indicating the points of intersection with the y axis. First we need to sketch y equals tan half x. We'll start by thinking about what tan x looks like. Now you should just know the shape of this graph. It starts down here at negative infinity, comes up through zero and then goes off to positive infinity. And it's really important you know where the asymptotes here are, so where it goes off towards infinity and never crosses. And these are at a half pi and 3 over 2 pi and the same for the negative values here. So we want a similar graph to tan of x, but it needs to be stretched by a scale factor of 2 in the x direction. So every point on this line is going to be twice as far in the x direction. The point at 0 is going to stay at 0 because twice 0 is still 0. But this asymptote here is going to move and be twice as far from the axis. So instead of being at pi over 2, it's going to be over here at pi which means the positive part of this curve here will have roughly the same shape but it's going to go all the way over to pi up here but not crossing it and it should look like this so notice we've got roughly the same shape it's quite useful to put your asymptotes on you don't actually need to for the marks but it does make it clear to the examiner that your graph doesn't cross this line going through x equals pi as we're going between negative 2 pi and 2 pi you should also have a bit that's negative over here and a bit that's positive over here. Next we'll think about the graph of y equals 3 cos of a half x. We'll start just by looking at the shape of cos x which you should know. It goes through 0, 1 and it repeats every 2 pi. Now we'll think about how this graph will transform the standard cos x graph. It's been multiplied by 3 that's going to have the effect of stretching it in the y direction so instead of going between 1 and minus 1 is going to go all the way up to 3 and all the way down to minus 3. But the general shape of the graph will stay the same and the points it crosses the axis will also stay the same at this point. So it will look something like this. But this isn't yet our final answer because it's not cos of x, it's cos of a half x. And as we talked about with the tan half x, that's going to have the effect of stretching it in the x direction. So every point should be twice as far along the x axis. Once again, this point at 3 here will stay where it is because twice the x value of 0 is still 0. But each of these points will move twice as far along the axis. This point here is going through pi over 2. That's going to move all the way to going through pi. This point down here currently at pi will be twice as far away. So that will be at 2 pi over here. Applying the same principle to the other side, this point would move to pi and this point down here would move to 2 pi and you should get something that looks like this. So your final answer without any of the extra curves on should look like this. Key things to look out for is that your tan of half x goes through negative 2 pi, 0 and 2 pi and has asymptotes at negative pi and pi and your 3 cos a half x should go through 3 on the axis up here. It should cross the axis at negative pi and pi and it should repeat just once over the whole region. It's not actually necessary to label the x-intercepts in this question but it does say indicating the point of intersection with the y-axis and that's for this graph here so it's really important that you do label that your graph passes through the y-axis at y equals 3 up here. In part 2 we need to show that the equation tan a half x equals 3 cos a half x can be expressed in the form 3 sine squared half x plus sine half x minus 3 equals 0. So we'll start with our tan a half x equals 3 cos half x and we'll think about how we can rewrite tan half x. You should know from your trig identities that tan theta is the same as sine theta over cos theta. So we can write tan of a half x as sine a half x over cos a half x. We'll keep the 3 cos half x on the right side. Next, we'll remove the fraction by multiplying both sides by cos a half x. That leaves us with sine a half x on this side. And on this side, 
cos of half x times cos of half x gives us cos squared of half x, so we get 3 cos squared of half x. Next, we'll use our other trig identity. We know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. If I subtract sine squared from both sides, I get cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. So my next step, I'll keep the left hand side the same. On the right hand side, instead of cos squared of a half x, I'm going to have 1 minus sine squared of a half x. So I'm going to use some brackets here because I'm going to multiply the whole expression by 3. Next, I'll expand the brackets out so we get 3, and then the other term I get 3 multiplied by minus sine squared of half x. And to get it into the required form, I need to move these two terms here over to the other side. So I'm going to add 3 sine squared half x and subtract 3. So now I've got a quadratic equation in terms of sine squared of half x. And if I solve this, I'll get two solutions. And those two solutions correspond to the points where these two curves intersect. So I should get one solution which is less than pi and one solution that's in between pi and 2 pi. So we'll start by looking at the discriminant of this quadratic and see if it's a nice one that we can factorise or if we need to use the formula. So a is 3, b is 1, and c is negative 3. So if I do b squared minus 4ac, that's 1 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 3, which gives me 37. So because root 37 is a third, that means it's not going to be easy to factorise and it's probably sensible to use the formula instead. So we're going to solve to find sine of half x. Here's the quadratic formula. Remember, in this case, we're not actually solving for x, we're solving for sine of half x. So that might seem a little bit confusing at first, but we use the quadratic formula like we normally would. But instead of our answer being x equals, it'll be sine of half x equals, and then we'll still have a little bit to do after we've got our solution. So we've got minus b, that's going to be negative 1, plus or minus the square root of the discriminant, which we've already worked out is root 37. And that's all divided by 2a. Well, a is 3, so that's divided by 6. And if I put that into my calculator, I get sine of half x equals 0.847 and so on. Now, it's likely I'm going to need this answer later, so it's a good idea to store it in my calculator. To do that, I press Shift and then STO, and then I choose any of the red letters up here. I'm going to choose A for this one. So if I want to access that value again, it's stored in my calculator's memory. We'll do the same thing for the negative version. So we've got negative 1, subtract root 37 over 6. And that gives us negative 1.18 and so on. But remember, we're solving for sine of a half x here. And if we plotted the graph of sine of a half x, you would notice it only goes between 1 and negative 1. So this negative 1.18 will not give us a solution when we do the next part. So we can ignore that and focus on the 0.847. So at this stage, I've got sine of a half x equals 0.847. To solve for a half x, all I need to do is inverse sine of the right-hand side. And fortunately, I've got this value stored in my calculator as a. So making sure my calculator is in radians, I do inverse sine of a, and I get that by pressing the alpha button. And that gives me 1.01 and so on. Once again, I might need this answer later, so I'm going to store that in my calculator, this time as b. Now, I could, if I wanted, multiply this by 2 and get one of the solutions for x. But it's a good habit to find the second solution before I multiply by 2. I'm going to use the symmetry property of sine in order to find my second solution. And the symmetry property for sine says if I've got a solution theta, to find the other solution, I do pi minus theta, in this case 1.010. You can see that by the graph, but I'm not going to go into detail on this question. So in this case, pi minus my answer gives me 2.13 and so on. So I'll store this one in my calculator just in case anything goes wrong. And this one I stored as b, and I'm going to multiply that by 2. So my first solution is 2.02. .02. My second solution, remember I stored that as C, I multiply that by 2, and I get 4.26 for my other solution to three significant figures.